Hello, everyone. We're here with John DeLeo for the third season of No Small Parts. And John, introduce yourself just for the few people in the world left who don't know who you are. <laughs> okay, Nick. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm, I'm John DeLeo. I'm the author of seven books about classic movies. And we're here to talk about the most recent one. There are no small parts. 100 outstanding film performances with screen time of 10 minutes or less. And this episode is focused on... Florence Bates as Mrs. Edith Van Hopper for her eight minutes uh, in Alfred Hitchcock's classic, Rebecca, from 1940. It won the Best Picture Oscar that year. The only Hitchcock movie ever to win a Best Picture really? Oscar. Even though he, if you can believe it, never won a Best Director Oscar in his entire career. Wow, because there's so much more famous ones than Rebecca. Yes, well, it's his first American film, so it made a kind of a splash. And it was produced by David O. Selznick right after he produced Gone with the Wind. And the film not only was well received uh, by the critics and all, but it was hugely popular, a, fa a fantastic uh, financial success, and much imitated by so many movies in the next 20 years after that, of wow. any movie with a mysterious house and a sinister housekeeper <laughs> and all that stuff that is both you know romantic and mysterious and whatever so a real a really great hook so um, Alfred Hitchcock wasn't that well known here until he this was movie not really I mean certainly uh, people who went to see British movies might have seen the 39 steps or the lady vanishes which did get him international acclaim but uh, the mainstream American audience uh, probably did not see a Hitchcock film until Rebecca but it does seem like everyone did see it and so he had a great stretch of popularity in the first half of the 1940s. Um, then he hit a slump, and then he, of course, had a, an incredible 1950s, uh, which is probably the decade he's most revered for. In Rebecca, Florence Bates is only, her eight minutes come in the first sort of 15 minutes of the movie, and she constitutes basically a prologue to the main plot. Her plot is um, in Monte Carlo, and of course the main action is set in England at the great Mandalay estate. But uh, Joan Fontaine plays the sort of mousy paid companion to Florence Bates, who's a rather vulgar, rich American woman, uh, a new money a woman who's very much concerned with the social scene and sort of a social climber. And she's fascinated by Laurence Olivier's Max de Winter because he is old money. And of course, she's shocked to find out that her paid companion and Max de Winter are going to be married. Um, she knew, didn't even know they were seeing each other because she was ill for a while. Anyway, she's wonderfully funny and she's sort of a character you love to hate because she's vulgar and she's rude and she isn't very nice to Joan Fontaine who's so sweet. And, uh, but she makes us laugh so much with her vulgarity. You know, she puts out her cigarette in a jar of cold cream. She takes her medicine and immediately says, I need a chocolate, you know, that kind of thing. So she's sort of, she's sort of delightful while being kind of horrid. And then it all culminates in a wonderful scene, her final scene, when she knows the truth, uh, Joan Fontaine's gonna marry Laurence Olivier, and she kind of talks to her directly and doesn't have much hope for Joan Fontaine's success as the great lady of, a, of an English manor house. And um, so it's a, it, she gets to show some colors within her eight minutes, both the comedy and this sort of no-nonsense direct approach to how the world works, and then wishes her good luck and dashes off. Now, of course, once Florence Bates exits from the movie, the real plot begins, which is uh, Joan Fontaine out of her element in this great estate called Manderley in England. And even though she's just lost this sort of formidable woman that she works for, the Florence Bates character is sort of replaced in the plot by Mrs. Danvers, played by Judith Anderson, who's another sort of middle-aged formidable woman that Joan Fontaine is now afraid of. And uh, the basic plot is about Rebecca, who is dead when the movie begins. She was Olivier's first wife, and she sort of hovers over everything that happens. And uh, Mrs. Danvers is devoted to her, and Joan Fontaine is so worried that Olivier is still madly in love with her, and that she's just uh, an also-ran who could never compete. And so it's basically, we're put in her shoes, uh, Joan Fontaine's shoes, of uh, wondering what's going on, feeling like we're, we, we don't know what's going on as well, and, and, and we sympathize with her enormously. But of course, things uh, become known, and uh, it's a very satisfying, juicy plot. 
and it's a beautiful black and white movie.